There we go. And then I will spotlight me. So I'm not going to be distracted by you guys, or you're not going to be distracted by all the other stuff. Okay, so today... Remind, just remind everybody to put themselves on mute. Yeah, if you, and, and if you have something to say, fine. But uh, yeah, otherwise, try and keep yourself on mute. I'm just going to adjust my vice a bit here. All right, so I had started with the idea of doing uh, articulated flies which is two flies that have some flexibility between them. And what brought that to mind is I, I didn't bring them in here to show you, but there's, there's a product that a, a Swiss guy makes called Magic Heads that's like an inverted suction cup that you slide over the hook that faces forward this way. And the idea is that when you pull that through the water, it causes the fly to wobble. And I think you, you can do the same thing with woolly buggers. You can get a great big massive uh, head on the front of those things, which causes the fly not to go through the water smoothly, it wobbles. And if you can get a fly to do that, you can put uh, a second part of the fly back with a, a loose connection in between so that the tail actually wobbles a bit. Well, that's not where it ended up. Because <laughs> somebody wanted to know how to tie the flies, the bunny leeches that our, our good friend uh, uses to, to dredge fish out of the bottom of the lakes around here. So I, they're, they're a variation of a bunny leech. Now, a bunny leech to me was just initially a fairly long shank hook with a little bit of rabbit strip out the back for a tail. And then the bunny leech was was wrapped around the hook all the way up at this, palmered up the hook and tied off at the head. And that was a basically a pike fly or a bass fly. Uh, now what, uh, what we've seen here is these extended body ones that have a fairly long uh, piece of rabbit strip. And it's got either an underbody or something underneath to make it interesting. Uh, and initially tied with, with two hooks with a connection in between the front hook and the back hook. You could tie them on a single hook with just a whole whack of bunny sticking out the back, but then you would get short strikes because the, the fish would hit the tail of the fly and not hook anything. So the idea with this particular fly is to tie it on two hooks and cut the barb and hook off of the front hook so that when the fish hits the back of the fly, it gets hooked on the trailer. And to extend the length, instead of using a really long shank hook, uh, I'm going to connect the two hooks together with monofilament to give it a little flexibility. Uh, now, with the rabbit strip in between, it reduces the flexibility some, but I, I will see how it goes. Uh, I tried doing it with what are called shanks. You can buy a thing called a shank uh, from the fishing hole or, or from Robinson's. And I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to tie it on a shank that doesn't have a hook at the end. How the hell do you put that sucker in the vise? So Florin and I had a little discussion, and he has some ideas, but he's in Jasper today, so he's not going to be tied. So I'll start off doing the two hook method or the sacrificial hook method. And I, because you're gonna cut off the uh, barb on one of the hooks, uh, you wanna make sure the front one is a cheap hook. So when I was down in Bellingham for my medical treatment, uh, I went into the local fishing store and they had Daiichi hooks on cheap. So, I bought some uh, Daiichi uh, streamer hooks uh, that are number eight and they're like four X long. So they get a nice long body up the front and they were relatively expensive. And keeping with the cheap, I've got the back one is, is it's a, you know, this is nine bucks for 25 hooks. <clears throat> that's not too bad. Although I'm not gonna cut this one off. That's, that's the trailer hook. Uh, so I'm using number eight because I figure 
we're not trying to catch monsters. So we'll uh, probably a number eight's big enough to, to hook up most of the fish around here. So I'll take the trailer hook out. If I can take it out of here. And oh yeah, no. Yeah, I had a cup I had a whole whack of different hook choices that I was looking at using. <laughs> I had a some of them using this Gamakatsu, which has 25 hooks for 12 bucks. So that's a little more expensive. Uh, that's a, a light wire hook. I gave those up because I thought they were a little on the light side. You could use these guys too, which are number eight must add uh, hooks. Uh, and they're not horribly expensive either, but they're, they're saltwater hook and they're a little, a little shiny. So I decided to go with these. Oh, and the, the other thing <laughs> is that I wanted the trailer hook to have a ring eye. Not, not not a turned up or turned down eye, but a ring eye, because that makes it easier to tie the nylon onto that's going to attach to the front hook. So that's the first order of business, is I'm going to, before I do anything, I'm going to get my pliers here, my uh, non-serrated pliers. I'm going to bend down the barb. I'll stick that in the vise. And the first thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to attach the monofilament that connects the back to the front hook. And I'm using Maxima 10 pound. And I'm going to take a good chunk off the spool to make it easier to work with. So the way I, I tie this on, I tie this on with a Duncan loop because a Duncan loop is, is uh, you slide the knot down to the hook and it, uh, it uh, pulls straight off the ring eye. If you have an up eye or a down eye, it, it makes this bottom hook either cock, cock, cock up or cock down. So I figured a ring eye would work better. Again, this is experimenting. And a Duncan loop is basically a slip knot. And so what I do is I bring it out, double it up, take the uh, the knot tying end. I want I want a reasonable amount of that. And I make a, a loop that goes backwards. So you can see that there's the standing line, there's the loop. I've got the near end. And I'll take the tip of that Lot and I'll run it through the loop, the two lines, the standing line and the and the bent back loop. I'll run that through three times. Sometimes the third one, if this is maxima, is stiff. It's a little hard to get the third one through. There we go. And then when I when I pull that knot up, um, you'll see it. It ends up being a a slip knot. And when I get it close to there, I'll grab my pliers again and I'll hold on to the tag end and, and do a really good job of snugging that down. Now, the reason I do that slip knot is because then the line from the front to the back goes straight through and underneath the ring eye. So it does a, it pulls straight on the hook. I I have found a way of tying a Duncan loop on uh, on the end of my tippet. I fly on the end of a tippet with a Duncan loop, and I can do that almost blindfolded now. I have figured out a way of doing it because <laughs> I I ran into that issue when I was fishing in the Motueka in the, in New Zealand. And to tie a new fly on, I was holding it up to the moon so I could see where the line was going and decided, I think I need to find a way to tie it on. It's, uh, I can tie almost blindfolded, get the tag on. 
So there's my connection to the front hook. After that, it's pretty straightforward fly tying. I'm just gonna shorten this up a little bit so I don't have too much in the way as I'm trying to tie. So I'll start at the, at the head of the fly, right behind the eye. And we'll wrap her. Now, we have a guy in the club who's new to fly tying. So I, I said I would talk a few basics. Um, when you when you tie it on, I, I make my line, my thread go at about a 45 degree angle. And I'll make the first wrap around. And then a second wrap around. And then I tell them, watch where the tip of the bobbin is relative to where the thread is touching the hook. And if the tip of the bobbin is to the towards the eye of the hook from where it's attached, it hits the hook shank. The thread is going to walk forward when you wrap it around. If the tip of the bobbin faces the back, it's backward from there where it touches the hook, then the thread is going to walk backwards. So by doing a couple of wraps in front and then a couple of wraps over, you secure the thread to the hook shank. And I'll run this all the way down. Because I'm two things I'm doing with that is just we call it dressing the hook. Um, and oh, another key thing when you're cutting off things, always come down from the top, slide it down to the hook, and then snip. And that keeps your bobbin from ending up on the floor unexpectedly. So I'm going to go right back to the point, to, to the bend of this. And, and there's the point, and the bend is where the, the shank starts to bend downward. And I'm going to stop there with my thread. Now, I need to put the tail on is rabbit strip. And what Dale uses, apparently, it's this variegated stuff. Uh, and there's a couple of different colors. It comes in several different colors, actually. But it's, it's what we call straight cut rabbit strip. Uh, and it's, which means that when you, it's, it's cut straight down the skin of the rabbit. If, it, if, it's, if it's not, you can get this cross cut rabbit strip that's a little thinner and it's cut uh, not with the grain of the fur. It's kind of cut across the grain of the fur. Now, for rabbit fur like this, where you're going to hang it straight out the back and you want it to, to hang to be straight on the hook, you need the straight cut stuff. If you're going to wrap it around the hook shank, you want the cross cut stuff. So anyway, I'm going to pick one here that's, uh, that's nice and gaudy. So there he is. Now, the rabbit strip has a grain to where the fur is. And like I say, the, the straight cut stuff, the fur kind of comes straight out from the, the leather part. Uh, and the cross cut stuff, it tends to come off at an angle. Uh, so I'm gonna use the straight cut. Uh, and you see the grain, it goes one direction off the leather of the, the rabbit strip. So there's my end where the fur overhangs the back of the leather part of the rabbit. And what I'm going to do with that is I want a nice, neat little tail. So I'll come in and just with my scissors, I will snip a point in the leather uh, either side. And what that does is that just reduces the bulk of the leather a bit at the back end of the, the strip. So it just re so you get a, a little finer tail that sticks out the back. Now, if you don't have a good bodkin and you don't know what a bodkin is, is a new tire. Bodkin is basically a needle stuck in a handle with a handle on it. I have a nice bodkin here. This is and what I do with this is I figure, okay, how long do I t want the tail to hang out the back of the hook shank? So I will measure just a little less than shank length. I don't want it to hang out too far back. And I'll hold it in my left hand. 
and I use my bodkin and I'll slide it in on the top of the leather of the rabbit strip and push the fur forward that I've slid under right up to the to the skin. So you can see now that that I've got fur going forward and backward with the skin exposed in the middle. And I'm going to put that skin right over top of where the thread is, centered on the hook shank. Do a pinch wrap so that I don't capture all and oh another thing. With working with rabbit, a little spit doesn't hurt. It keeps the fur kind of from flying all over the place. So I go down in between around the hook shank and pull up. And then I want to make darn sure that that's sitting right on top of the hook. I caught the point. That's more bite could work. That for there. This is what I say, fumbling with your fly tying. All right, so now that now that that's there, I'm going to make sure that it's 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 down really well. I'm gonna put another wrap in. Holding it with my thumb, try and keep that skin from wandering around the hook shank. There we go. Okay, so yeah, I did it again. That's the problem with this really long rabbit fur. It, it hides the point. Ah, start again. Got to get that. More spit. Hold it down. Over top. There we go. That's a good clean one. Up in between the fingers, down the down the far side, fur out of the way. This is a real fuzzy strip. There we go. Okay, get two in, lift it up, and pull it back. And then I'll wrap two or three in front of that. Hook, shank, hook point. Now, I'm going to hold the rest of the strip back out of the way for the time being because I'm going to tie the body on here. And for, for fun, I want a, a fuzzy body with some UV in it. So I'm using some all, all of UV polar chenille. Oh. And I will... Clean up the end because this stuff tends to unravel at the end. And I'll tie that end down in front of the rabbit fur on the head shank of it. And there's no being tidy about this. So you get a lot of material here that's fuzzy and sticks out of the way. Then I'm going to bring my thread up to the front. And I'm just going to hold the thread out of the way with my bobbin rest here for a minute. So here I just take and turn the rotary vise. If see what happens with this stupid rabbit strip. Get out of there. In the way. There we go. So I'm going to make a bit of a fuzzy body up here with the polar chenille. And all that does is it just adds a little flash and bulk to the body of the fly. We're going to do the same on the front. I'm going to stop wrapping the chenille up a good eye width back from the eye of the hook. Uh, and I'm gonna tie that in there. A couple of wraps to hold it down there. A couple of wraps in front, keeping my monofilament out of the way. And then trim off. A 
at this point, I'll take my rabbit strip forward and I will measure to where the eye of the hook is. Use my bodkin to pull the, the stuff I don't want forward out of the way so I can get at the actual leather of the underside part of the strip. And then I will put my first wrap on here to hold it in place. Second wrap, wrap the hook. And then I'll come in with my scissors right where the eye of the hook is and snip the strip. <laughs> Trying all the time to avoid where I've got my mono. And then I'll build a little bit of a head here just to cinch that rabbit strip down. So you see now I've got a, a nice fuzzy bit of rabbit strip headed towards the back of the fly. And uh, whip finish the back from the front. So we now have tied one fly. Now you could tie that, uh, that nylon on after, but uh, I find that it's, it's just as easy to do it this way. Let it go. So you could tie the back fly by itself first and then tie the mono on the front. Six of one, half dozen of the other. So there's the back fly. Now the front. In the front, I'm going to use these uh, long shank uh, daichi. Not too cheap. It was in US dollars, but it was still pretty cheap. In this store that I went to in Bellingham, uh, they had a small section of fly tying material. I would have thought being in the vicinity of the Skagit River that uh, there would have been a lot more of stuff, but uh, no, there wasn't. I want to put a head on this guy. I've got a, an orange bead. I'm going to put that on first. And I want the, this is one of those slotted beads. I didn't have one that didn't have a slot. So this is what I had in stock. So I'm just going to put the, oh, I got to do the same thing with this one, darn it. To get that bead over the barb of the hook, I just have to pinch it. It's going to disappear anyway. Pardon me. The reason I'm leaving the, uh, the reason I'm leaving the hook intact is because at least if it's intact, I can hold it in the vise. With the straight shanks, I could not figure out how to hold a darn straight shank in the vise property. Again, we'll start at the front, right behind the bead, just to lock it up against the eye of the hook. And again, because we're, we're going to put some polar chenille down here, I'm going to cover the hook shank a bit with the uh, And that will help the polar chenille stick to the hook shank. It will also help when I put on the trailer hook. It'll help hold down the nylon. Now this is where we attach the trailer hook to the to the front. And what I've got for this is you can do one of two things. You can make yourself a little piece of mono here that has a uh, a loop at the end that I can put over the the back hook and pull it to my spring, or you can use what uh, 
Farn had suggested, which I'm going to try here for the first time, a rubber band. And that will fit into my nice and nice and a little bit of tension on it so that I can hold this now. The mono, I want to, I want to try and keep the, the front and the back to about a shank length apart, maybe a little less than a shank length apart. And having the rubber band holds this trailer hook in place. Well, I put the thread over top of the mono on the hook front hook. This works a hell of a lot better than the little nylon loop that I used. And I'll run that almost all the way up. I got a little tag here. I'm going to cut it off. Now, before I tie that tag down, last the tag down, I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to take the mono and I'm going to flatten that last little bit. Because what that'll do is that gives a flat spot for the thread to go up against so that it doesn't pull out and then wrap back over that little tip. That way, there's no way that that big, however big fish is, if it's no, more than 10 pounds, it'll break the mono before it pulls the mono off. The... Then I don't need to use super glue, which I tried the first time and got super glue onto the fibers of the rabbit strip and it looked like hell. <laughs> Now, I have cut the rabbit strip off rather than leave it on this one so that you can see the space here as I'm tying the next strip on. You can keep them all as one piece of rabbit strip, which is how I tied the other ones. And I may do a second fly in, in just to show you that. Um, again, drop, just trimming this to, so it fits in with the rest. <laughs> and I will have that sit down so that it will basically just touch the eye of the back rabbit strip. So you basically have two flies that are fit together here. And I'll tie that down. Again, lift it up so that I can wrap in front. Keep that back out of the way. Get my polar chenille up. And tie it down. And don't care if this is ugly. Once again, with my bow and rest up. And then grab, uh, get back here. That's the problem with dealing. That's why I cut the other one short. <laughs> Otherwise, you've got to keep this extra long rabbit strip out of the way. And it's not easy. Oh, come on. Get back there and stay there. I'm going to take the time of shoving that in the spring so it doesn't keep flopping forward. It's not going to do it. Okay, finally. This is why I say this is experiments in fly tying. <laughs> so if you had kept the, the original strip intact, which is what I did on some of them, um, you can place because it's shorter, you could probably pre-short it and then it doesn't flop around so much. 
but it's same the same drill in terms of tying it down at the end. I'll use my bike and find a spot just behind where that bead is. And I'll slide the bodkin in here and expose the leather of the strip. A couple of wraps over. And then pull everything back. Wrap it front. And trim this guy off. And now right where that stub of, of leather is, I'm going to build a little bit of a head just to make sure it's on there really good and provide a bit of a transition between the bead and the rest of the bottom. And then we'll do a couple of uh, whip finishes. So now you can see there's the uh, the finished fly, and that's done in the two two basic two flies together held to two flies separately tied, held together with a piece of mono, as the trailer gives a little bit of flexibility. Now, and the reason I did that is there's no leather strip connecting the two, just the mono, because the leather strip tends to make that joint a lot stiffer uh, because the leather itself is, is, is stiff. So you can see that this one wiggling back and forth is stiffer than the way this one works. So I figured I'd tie it both ways and you could make your own choice as to which you thought might be more effective. Um, last, operation we do for this guy is we sacrifice the hook on the front fly with a pair of wire cutters into my waste bin at the bottom here and I'll take it I'll take the wire cutters right down to where the right, right down to where the bend is you can see there and I will cut that right off into my waste bucket There you go. So I'll stop the spotlight and we can chat. And if you want, I can, uh, we can, uh, you can go off mute and we can chat about which you think would work well and uh, whether you think it's an effect, it will be an effective fly or not. <laughs> so this is, this is, you have to understand that this is, uh, what happens to me the week before I do these fly tying sessions is I spend a, a couple hours working out the kinks. Didn't have as much time this week for that, so. <laughs> so there you go. Question, yes. Dale, do you tie a single strip of rabbit fur or do you do the two, two separate hooks? I... I I tie my articulated hooks uh, a bit different. I I use the most. I when I first came here, I bought everything. For, I forget his last name from Doug, and he yeah. had all these hooks and hooks that I never use for my other flies. So they, I, I I use them as sacrificial hooks. Yeah, and, and what I use. Uh, what I found out, what works for me, and for me trolling, is uh, that I use a trailing hook. And the trailing hook that I find it works best for me, is, it's a number 10 all-around hook. It's uh, it's not very big. Uh, the the eyes close tight, and, and it has a bit of a wider gap. <clears throat> so what... Um, so when I start with an articulator hook, I put the sacrificial hook in the vise. I use, instead of mono, I use 10 pound braid. 
Uh, and it, I just leave it at uh, I So the the braid, uh, you know, I, I leave the sacrificial, or I'm sorry, the trailing hook, whatever length you want, maybe uh, an inch and a half, two inches behind uh, where you're going to cut off the sacrificial hook, the, the end off the sacrificial hook the hook part and, and anyway what i have to do because that small hook you can't fold over the braid and stick it in i i stick one end of the line into the through the eye then the other end in and then i i loop it over and pull it up so so in effect it's loop there's then two two lengths okay. of braid goes forward to the sacrificial hook i put yeah. a a tiny bit of super glue on the sacrificial hook, and I and I I wrap it down. I wrap down the uh, the braid to the from the back to the eye, yeah, and then from the eye back to the end. And if you want to be, I, I've really never had one pull off. But if you want to be super careful, you could you could actually turn it and then wrap it back towards the front. But for the trout and these legs, it's not necessary. Yeah. So, so now I've had a sacrificial hook braid, the trailing hook. Then what I do, I put on, uh, like basically get four strands of flash, and I, I fold it all. Well, I tie it around the thread, and it uh, ties along the sacrificial hook and hangs out the back to pass the trailing hook. And and that's just wrapped down. Then what what I do next is I take my rabbit strip. I don't do like Dave where I stick the trailing hook through it. I just let the trailing hook dangle, and yeah. then I I wrap from. Uh, I don't use very much, maybe only an inch of the sacrificial hook, and so I tie my rabbit fur onto that. At the just at the start, and then uh, go go under the fur to the to the eye, and then I tie it down there. So that that is the setup. That is actually the, basically the setup for having um, trying to think here. That's just like my normal uh, rabbit fur uh, hook that's not articulated. So. You, you basically have, you know, uh, that's it. So, but to articulate, then I get another sacrificial hook. Use braid again and comes out of that combo with the trailing hook. Uh, have it bring it up. And, uh, but again, I have experimented at times where I put flash on the very forward sacrificial hook. Some days it works really good, other days it does nothing. So I have all kinds of these variations. But generally then what I do for that front section of inch, maybe inch and a half, I, I'm backtracking. I'm not very good at explaining stuff, but where the original uh, that I had tied first with the sacrificial hook and the trailing hook, I put the braid through it, bring it to the front, to the new sacrificial hook in the braid. And I can, I use both, uh, well, let's say I'm using cross-cut rabbit fur to wrap the front giant. I have it so that the fur that I'm just putting on the uh, cross-cut comes back and covers the eye of the, the original set with the trailing hook. I, um, yeah. that, that's how I space my, uh, the length of the braid there. And then and I just simply wrap the rabbit fur to the front and tie it off. Done. So the, that, the fly is done. Just cut the hook so, off. So, that, the so, that's, so that's like this. You have two pieces of fur like that? Exactly. But the, the, the fur that's in your, there, in your right hand there now, yeah. I yeah. don't tie it like that. I just simply tie it on upside down at the back of the hook and just wrap it touching turns to the front okay so yeah so you've done you've done the palmer at the front so right. it's really fuzzy to yeah and, so that makes it 
And the length of the front, uh, the fur that comes off the crosscut has to cover the hook, the hook, um, hook eye in your le left hand there. Yeah, all the way back that's, there. That's yeah. how you get the length of the braid to connect the two. Right. And then just remember to cut off the hook off the sacrificial hook at the front. So basically, I've used, I've left a good trailing hook, and I've used two sacrificial hooks that I've cut off. Okay. The, the ends off. But that's how I do mine. Now, I, I've done a, a lot of variations, and my experience on these local lakes, the way I troll, I've tried it with flash like you did, uh, or um, with chenilles, they never work for me. Didn't they? That, that, that's just me. What works for me is simply wrapping the rabbit fur armored around the hook. Okay. Front, front, I'm just saying what works for me. Yeah, if no, you... no, that, that makes sense. Again, I, like I say, I was just fumbling with this thing. So, um, and I hadn't seen one of yours. Yeah, this this would be similar. The the difference is, I think, with the palmered fur at the front of the hook shank or or the assembly, is that creates a bunch of bulk that will cause it to wobble as you as you troll it. I think, um, as yeah, you weren't here when we started, that was what these uh, these things that Mark Pettijohn has, so the Coast Magic heads that have a sort of suction cup shape that face uh, the front of the hook. And that causes the fly to, to wobble as it goes forward, which makes the tail wobble. Now, now I, I bought some of those. Yeah. Last year, I tried it. It didn't work for me. Okay. I tried different ranks out in front of the hook. Very short, long, medium, long. It, yeah. it actually didn't work for me. <laughs> and and I, I was trying. I even asked you, how do I put something in front to try to get my uh, the leech to wobble, yeah. And, and you suggested balsa. I bought balsa and sanded it out in shape. Didn't work. I tried a cork that I sanded like concave. Didn't work. I, I it, it just and you look at like you hold it out beside the boat and look at it, and it just kind of drags behind. But for me, at the speeds I'm going, it works, and the other stuff doesn't work. Huh. Uh, what can I say? I, I'm still trying to figure a way to get it to <laughs> wobble nicely, and I, I have yeah. I, that's three things I've tried. So now, further to that, again for me, because I use bunny leeches a lot because they work for me a lot. There's sometimes yeah. when, pardon. Dale, have you tried the, there's sometimes have you tried the what's called the wiggle fin uh, I forget I forget the name of it but it is a concave piece of plastic you tie in your line in front and it has like four little U's cut out so it, no, it, the one I, I'm referring to is like a it's it's you and then you put it you slide a a, a a silicone collar on the line and that stops the wiggle fin from sliding back down and it's it's uh there's a guy up island well dennis get me um, oh that's the things i have i thought that's oh. what dave was talking about and it, yeah. yeah you buy the stopper so you place the stopper yeah. where you want to and i tried lanes now i think for me the secret to bunny hair leeches for me is the colors. I, I have all these colors. One day I tr I have pure red, and for two hours it, it was showtime. I couldn't even get the line out. That was the first and only time I've ever caught fish in that red bunny leech. But the colors that do work for me is um, the white tail, and I find generally two-tone work better except for the tiger bars tiger bar works good by itself i've tried two tones doesn't work but the other ones that work is um blue tail white tail with chartreuse heads or the front part with chartreuse uh the um one that worked really good was a very pale tan 
with a gray front. Now, unfortunately, that rabbit fur was in this stuff I I purchased, and it was really old, and it had faded. And I can I've never been able to replicate that color. I've tried to get tan and then use peroxide. I've used bleach. It just mushed up the fly. Never got the color. So if you can ever find a rabbit fur between cream and tan, that's what you need. And it, it was deadly, tan and gray. And um, and that was, um, that was one other, uh, well, black was always a good standby. And I think that's it. But basically those four, you can live with that here in these local lakes. Now, that was the last two and a half years. Maybe this year they've stopped working, right? <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's that's all my knowledge on that. Well, well, thanks for that. That that's why I titled this experimental fly tying because I, I think if if that brings anything to the uh, exercise, uh, it, it's you got to try different things. <laughs> and is that close, Dale? Pardon me. Is that close? Can you see me? Uh, yeah. It, it, now, what color is that supposed to be? It looks like a brown gray, but well, uh, that, it's from an old that, fly tying box. That that's what you use for the head portion, or or the okay, you know, the, the front part of the articulation. But the back part is the difficult part. I, I, I haven't been able to find that replication of tan. It's a very pale tan. I, and the only reason I say that, because in the package it says tan. But when you go into the and buy tan, it, it's, it's much more brown than this pale tan that I found in this old supply. Like it was so old, the leather was... was uh, uh, I don't know, darken the edges and crumbly, and, but it still worked great. Maybe it's the old leather that's the issue, uh, not the color. <laughs> well, it could be that too, instead yeah. of being a bright one. So I, I thought you could save the sacrificial hook by buying these, these things that you can get at Robinson's called shanks, which is just just that. It's, it's no hook on the end. It's got an eye and it's a straight thing. But when I get them home, I decide, how the hell do you hold that sucker in the vise to tie on? I, no matter what I do, it wobbles. Can you highlight me. yourself again? Oh, okay. We'll do that. Um, so that's it. There, it, it it's just it comes comes in a package like that. You can get it's fairly hefty. Uh, you can get them in uh, different lengths. And that's what it is. Looks on the end. So how do you hold that in the bloody vice? It, 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 it bury the bury the back end in in the jaws, I, I suppose. And then you could do your bunny leech on the front, but you'd have to have your 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 braid or 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 mono pre applied and glued out the back. Uh, and then you do your rabbit strip with the overhang. Uh, and then when you tie the secondary hook on, I suppose you could leave this hang out the front and, and tie the secondary hook. But I, I just couldn't put this in my brain. I just couldn't put the sequence together. <laughs> so I didn't have much time this week to experiment. <laughs> it was, it's been a very busy week. Well, well, for my, I found that the, the, those, uh, those shine are many times more expensive than yes. using an expensive book. 12 bucks for 25 of the suckers. Yeah. So if you buy buy a cheap hook, which these ones were 10 bucks for 25, or I think the other ones, because I bought the ones in the States, they were they were particularly inexpensive uh, at this place in Bellingham. Uh, so I bought a package, a couple of packages of them there. Because then I can cut the tail off, and it's not so bad. They they were like five bucks US. Well, that was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm.
I, I think that's that's one of the things that this Saturday morning things are good for. Yeah, we can learn from each other uh, the kind of things you need to learn for uh, for being successful at this times business. I know I know we have a, 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 at least one person in the club this who has recently joined who has fly tying equipment material, but he doesn't know hasn't had any training i guess you could say in it so at, at some point i might do a little session on uh, basic technique uh how to attach materials to the hook how to do a pinch wrap uh how to do a whip finish uh some of that and talk about basic tools is that ian by chance big pardon ian by chance could be he just collared me at the end of the last meeting and said, "Big tall guy." Awesome. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah that's Ian. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I, I think you know, there's probably all of us that, that can share different techniques that we have that we can uh, teach each other. I've learned a few over the years, and I'm sure each one of you has got a few that they've learned over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, week in and week out, I keep learning new things by coming back to these Saturdays. I think they're yeah, good. yeah. So, uh, so there is gates here. I, uh, I'm going to give you something new. I just got a phone call from Brian Palace. Last yeah. Tuesday, he was on Four Lake. He got eight in the boat, nine to the boat, and innumerable hits on a Fuller Lake. And he wa he was watching. Uh, different trucks come into Fuller Lake before they pull into uh, the trout hatchery up there dumping fish. Hmm. That's what the guy said on our tour, that if they have any left, they dump them in Fuller after they've gone out and done their run. So it gets more, more fish than any of the other ones. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Maybe we should change our fish out. <laughs> uh, not to prospect. They uh, just dumped seven. No, they jumped. The last dump from freshwater was 700 grams. So pound and a half fish. Yes, I know. Prospect. They put a thousand. They put a thousand yeah. 700 gram fish in and 2,000 um, catchables. Yeah. So. And I think it'll be pretty good fishing prospect. Yeah, you're right. This is what happens when you're looking for the right hook. You end up with a whole handful of packages. <laughs> None of which really were the ones that I wanted to work with. <laughs> well, you know the saying, eh? the guy with the most toys at the end wins. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, there's a number 10 streamer wave. That one's got a long a long hook shank as well. That would be the, a good one for the front. If you're uh, not going to cut it off. Speaking of the guys with the most toys, I have probably 10 boxes of Ron Duncan's fly tying material yeah. selling in January. There's a whole pile of it. <sighs> So, um, just Sandy, just on a side note, have you listed Ron's boat on Marketplace yet? I put it on Use Victoria yesterday, with you know what? With, with the motors and all the other stuff. You you might have better luck on Marketplace. Yeah, I find Marketplace is much better for selling stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'll put it. I'll put it on Marketplace today. I I sold my inflatable boat in. Less than 24 hours on Marketplace. Okay. Thanks for the heads up on that. Yeah. I spoke with uh, Pat George, Sandy, and yeah. he's going to encourage Shake Brown to come to the annual Ron Duncan gear sale. Excellent. That's great to hear. Yeah, and uh, we'll try and get out to West Coast fly fishing 
But it was suggested that we not do it after a meeting, but on a weekend so more people could attend. Don't seem to be able to talk. I'm again. open to anything that'll help move the stuff. Well, I, I, I'm certainly, I think you should come to a meeting first for the stuff oh, and then probably yeah. leave it there and we'll do it. Uh, and then we'll do it on that weekend. Is that early? I think that's a good idea? Yeah, that's a good idea. We have access to the facility. That'd be great. I can be bribed to meet you there to open the door. <laughs> good. Yeah, is it or, coffee, or, coffee or beer that is your bribery? So can you fellows hear me? It's uh, Cormac Gates uh, from Qualcomm Beach. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. 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 All right. Uh, so I'm with uh, Mid-Island Castaways uh, Fly Fishing Club. And it's my first time. I, first of all, I'd like to take, thank Sandy and everybody else uh, for lots of good information this morning. But um, a couple of questions for you. Uh, if you're having uh, an event in Duncan, would you let us know? Uh, because we probably have quite a few people who would like to come down and uh, and participate if you have a sale going on there. Uh, the yeah. second thing is, uh, 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 Sandy, have you used articulated fly uh, shanks? Uh, you know, the old one is the the Waddington uh, shank, but there's a whole yeah. Variety. I looked at those yeah. and and it, the, the, again the, the 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 Waddington shank that has the two upturned or one one flat and one upturned. How the hell do you hold that in a vice? Uh, uh, well, I couldn't figure turned, that out either. Yeah, yeah, I've tied with them, and uh, is a, one of them is an upturned uh, upturned eye. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, you can hold those in the vice without uh, too much of a problem. Yeah, because uh, you put the eye it. in the vice, right? Uh, you put the eye in the vice, uh, and uh, you can turn then turn your vice sideways, uh, so you have a right orientation. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of others. I've just been looking on the uh, the internet. Uh, and there's all kinds of others now that are available with that double-ended eye. Uh, so, uh, you might want to look at that. Yeah, there's somewhere you can, they, they actually, you can clip the eye of, of another hook in, in, in them because they, it's one piece of wire that's got two eyes and there's a split in the middle. Yeah. So you could slip the eye of another hook in to hook it into the, the, uh, the formed eye. <laughs> that looked interesting, but I didn't have a lot of time this week to do that kind of experiment. So, well, if you can find uh, for that uh, front fly, uh, front shank, if you can find a, a fairly cheap source, if you like, of doesn't really even matter the length, uh, you're going to cut them off anyway. Um, I've got a collection from 40 years ago um, that I don't mind using for that front fly and just clip the uh, clip the bend off. Yeah, yeah. I, by the way, if, if uh, any of your guys want to join us on a Saturday morning when I send out the uh, invite here, uh, let just tell them to show up. We're more. Yeah, I've been for I've been forwarding it to everybody, but because yeah. it comes out Friday, a lot of yeah. people don't necessarily they aren't checking their email often enough. Uh -huh. What can I say? Yeah, norm normally I tried to get it get the notice out on a Thursday, but. Uh, Again, I didn't find out from Florin that he wasn't going to be around until yesterday. So, yeah, yeah. Well, he's we do often... have uh, Bill. We do have three members of uh, Mid Island Castaways on this morning. Gord is on as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Here. Yep. Oh, welcome. Thank you. Yes, yeah, yeah, good for him to exchange ideas and, and experiences and learn something. Yeah, you could probably you could, remembering uh, what you idea. learned. Give us an idea where's some good fishing up there. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Horn, Horn Lake uh, has been very good for uh, for cutties, uh, seasonal. Uh, February and March worked very well. And I've had great success with orange uh, articulated bunny leeches, uh, you know, but uh, quite a bit smaller than what uh, we saw tied today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the ones the ones that I tied are, are because uh, Dale has been tying some fairly long flies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a little bit more about Horn Lake at that time of year. Uh, you fellows might want to take a look at it. Uh, the the um, the cutties are starting to stage 
uh, for spawning at about the same time as kokanee fry are starting to uh, to appear out of the upper uh, big qualicum. Uh, and so you can use egg patterns as well as uh, small minnow patterns for them and uh, fish in the shallows. Uh, so you know, it'd be about 14, 14 feet down to maybe uh, five feet uh, right at the mouth of the, uh, where the upper uh, big qualicum enters into the lake. Hmm. Is Horn Lake got restrictions on motors? No. Nope. Okay. It's a pretty big lake. It's, it's a big lake, but if you go to the boat launch at the uh, west end of the lake, uh, you can stick right close to shore. Uh, you don't have to fish the whole lake. Uh, you just go a few hundred yards and you're right at the river mouth. Uh, that, uh, big, that, bay, that bend, if you like, in the lake, the west end bend, that's where I go fishing uh, for, uh, uh, for, for both rainbows and cutties. I'm sorry, I missed your name. Gord, is it? She has to go tomorrow, but she's got Sunday school. Sorry, what? She has to have somebody with her. Carmack? Is that right? Yes, that's Cormac. right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cormac, thank you very much. Can you use electric uh, motors on, like, it's not too far that I could use an electric motor? Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, I've, I've been fishing with friends who use their electric motors. I use a... Um, uh, fishing kayak. Uh, and I've also used just a, a rowing pontoon boat as well, uh, and easy distances. Hey Bill, if I go, I'll tow you to your location, and then you can play around, and I'll tow you back. <laughs> well, I've got a, like a good, kayak that's like four point five miles an hour. <laughs> what was Hear what you said about twenty-five miles an hour. Well, this is this is excellent that we've had so many people here uh, yes. today. Uh, 